Yashar Jasher 48. In those days, after the death of Yitzhak, Yahuwah commanded and caused a famine upon the whole land. At, at that time, Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, was sitting upon his throne in the land of Mitzrayim and lay in his bed and dreamed dreams. And Pharaoh saw in his dream that he was standing by the side of the river Mitzrayim. And while he was standing, he saw, and behold, seven fat-fleshed and well-favored kine came up out of the river, and seven other kine, lean-fleshed and ill-favored, came up after them, and the seven ill-favored ones swallowed up the well-favored ones, and still their appearance was ill as at first. And he awoke, and he slept again. And he dreamed a second time, and he saw, and behold, seven ears of grain came up upon one stalk, rank and good, and seven thin ears blasted with the east wind sprang up after them, and the thin ears swallowed up the full ones, and Pharaoh awoke out of his dream. And in the morning, the king remembered his dreams, and his ruach was sadly troubled on account of his dreams. And the king hastened and sent and called for all the magicians of Mitzrayim and the wise men, and they came and stood before Pharaoh. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed dreams, and there is none to interpret them. And they said unto the king, Relate your dreams to your servants, and let us hear them. And the king related his dreams to them, and they all answered and said with one voice to the king, May the king live forever, and this is the interpretation of your dreams. The seven good kind which you did see denote seven daughters that will be born unto you in the latter days. And the seven kine which you saw come up after them and swallowed them up are for a sign that the daughters which will be born unto you will all die in the lifetime of the king. And that which you did see in the second dream of seven full good ears of grain coming up upon one stalk. This is their interpretation, that you will build unto yourself in the latter days seven cities throughout the land of Mitzrayim. And that which you saw of the seven blasted ears of grain springing up after them and swallowing them up while you did behold them with your eyes, is for a sign that the cities which you will build will all be destroyed in the latter days, in the lifetime of the king. And when they spoke these words, the king did not incline his ear to their words, neither did he fix his heart upon them. For the king knew in his wisdom that they did not give a proper interpretation of the dreams. And when they had finished speaking before the king, the king answered them, saying, What is this thing that you have spoken unto me? Surely you have uttered falsehood and spoken lies. Therefore now give the proper interpretation of my dreams, that you may not die. And the king commanded after this, and he sent and called again for other wise men, and they came and stood before the king, and the king related his dreams to them, and they all answered him according to the first interpretation, and the king's anger was kindled, and he was very wroth, 
And the king said unto them, Surely you speak lies and utter falsehood in what you have said. And the king commanded that a proclamation should be issued throughout the land of Mitzrayim, saying, It is resolved by the king and his great men that any wise man who knows and understands the interpretation of dreams and will not come this day before the king, he shall die. And the man that will declare unto the king the proper interpretation of his dreams, there shall be given unto him all that he will require from the king. And all the wise men of the land of Mitzrayim came before the king, together with all the magicians and sorcerers that were in Mitzrayim and in Goshen, in Ra'amech, in Tachpanechech, in Sorar, and in all the places on the borders of Mitzrayim. And they all stood before the king. And all the nobles and princes and the attendees belonging to the king came together from all the cities of Mitzrayim, and they all sat before the king. And the king related his dreams before the wise men and the princes, and all that sat before the king were astonished at the vision. And all the wise men who were before the king were greatly divided in their interpretation of his dreams. Some of them interpreted them to the king, saying, The seven good kine are seven kings, who from the king's issue will be raised over Mitzrayim. And the seven bad kine are seven princes who will stand up against them in the latter days and destroy them. And the seven ears of grain are the seven great princes belonging to Mitzrayim who will fall in the hands of the seven less powerful princes of their enemies in the wars of our Lord the King. And some of them interpreted to the king in this manner, saying, The seven good kine are the strong cities of Mitzrayim, and the seven bad kine are the seven nations of the land of Canaan, who will come against the seven cities of Mitzrayim in the latter days and destroy them. And that which you saw in the second dream of seven good and bad ears of grain is a sign that the government of Mitzrayim will again return to your seed as at first. And in his reign, the people of the cities of Mitzrayim will turn against the seven cities of Canaan, who are stronger than they are, and will destroy them. And the government of Mitzrayim will return to your seed. And some of them said unto the king, This is the interpretation of your dreams. The seven good kine are seven queens, whom you will take for women in the latter days. And the seven bad kine denote that those women will all die in the lifetime of the king. And the seven good and bad ears of grain, which you did see in this second dream, are fourteen children. And it will be in the latter days that they will stand up and fight amongst themselves. And seven of them will smite the seven that are more powerful. And some of them said these words unto the king, saying, The seven good kind denote that seven children will be born to you, and they will slay seven of your children's children in the latter days. And the seven good ears of grain, which you did see in the second dream, are those princes against whom seven other less powerful princes will fight and destroy them in the latter days, and avenge your children's cause and the government will again return to your seed. And the king heard all the words of the wise men of Mitzrayim, 
and their interpretation of his dreams, and none of them pleased the king. And the king knew in his wisdom that they did not altogether speak correctly in all these words, for this was from Yahuwah to frustrate the words of the wise men of Mitzrayim in order that Yosef might go forth from the house of confinement and in order that he should become great in Mitzrayim. And the king saw that none amongst all the wise men and magicians of Mitzrayim spoke correctly to him. And the king's wrath was kindled and his anger burned within him. And the king commanded that all the wise men and magicians should go out from before him. And they all went out from before the king with shame and disgrace. And the king commanded that a proclamation be sent throughout Mitzrayim to slay all the magicians that were in Mitzrayim and not one of them should be suffered to live. And the captains of the guards belonging to the king rose up, and each man drew his sword, and they began to smite the magicians of Mitzrayim and the wise men. And after this, Merad, chief butler to the king, came and bowed down before the king and sat before him. And the butler said unto the king, May the king live forever, and his government be exalted in the land. You were angry with your servant in those days, now two years past, and did place me in the ward. And I was for some time in the ward, I and the chief of the bakers. And there was with us an Ivri servant belonging to the captain of the guard. His name was Yosef, for his master had been angry with him and placed him in the house of confinement and he attended us there. And in some time after, when we were in the ward, we dreamed dreams in one night, I and the chief of the bakers. We dreamed, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, and we came in the morning and told them to that servant, and he interpreted to us our dreams, to each man according to his dream, did he correctly interpret? And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so was the event. There fell not to the ground any of his words. And now, therefore, my lord and king, do not slay the people of Mitzrayim for naught. Behold, that slave is still confined in the house by the captain of the guard, his master, in the house of confinement. If it pleases the king, let him send for him that he may come before you and he will make known to you the correct interpretation of the dream which you did dream. And the king heard the words of the chief butler and the king ordered that the wise men of Mitzrayim should not be slain. And the king ordered his servants to bring Yosef before him. And the king said unto them, Go to him, and do not terrify him, lest he be confused, and will not know how to speak properly. And the servants of the king went to Yosef, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and the king's servants shaved him, and he changed his prison garment, and he came before the king. And the king was sitting upon his royal throne, in a princely dress girt around with a golden ephod, and the fine gold which was upon it sparkled, and the carbuncle and the ruby and the emerald, together with all the precious stones that were upon the king's head, dazzled the eye, and Yosef wondered greatly at the king. And the throne upon which the king sat was covered with gold and silver and with onyx stones, and it had 70 steps. 
And it was their custom throughout the land of Mitzrayim that every man who came to speak to the king, if he was a prince or one that was estimable in the sight of the king, he ascended to the king's throne as far as the 31st step. And the king would descend to the 36th step and speak with him. If he was one of the common people, he ascended to the third step and the king would descend to the fourth and speak to him. And their custom was, moreover, that any man who understood to speak in all the 70 languages, he ascended the 70 steps and went up and spoke till he reached the king. And any man who could not complete the 70, he ascended as many steps as the languages which he knew to speak in. And it was customary in those days in Mitzrayim that no one should reign over them. But who understood to speak in the 70 languages? And when Yosef came before the king, he bowed down to the ground before the king, and he ascended to the third step, and the king sat upon the fourth step and spoke with him, rather, and spoke with Yosef. And the king said unto Yosef, I dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter to interpret it properly. And I commanded this day that all the magicians of Mitzrayim and the wise men thereof should come before me. And I related my dreams to them, and no one has properly interpreted them to me. And after this, I this day heard concerning you, that you are a wise man, and can correctly interpret every dream that you hear. And Yosef answered Pharaoh, saying, Let Pharaoh relate his dream that he dreamed. Surely the interpretations belong to Elohim. And Pharaoh related his dreams to Yosef, the dream of the kine and the dream of the ears of grain. And the king left off speaking. And Yosef was then clothed with the Ruach Elohim before the king. And he knew all the things that would befall the king from that day forward. And he knew the proper interpretation of the king's dream. And he spoke before the king. And Yosef found favor in the sight of the king. And the king inclined his ears and his heart. And he heard all the words of Yosef. And Yosef said unto the king, Do not imagine that they are two dreams, for it is only one dream. For that which Elohim has chosen to do throughout the land, he has shown to the king in his dream. And this is the proper interpretation of your dream. The seven good kine and ears of grain are seven years, and the seven bad kine and ears of grain are also seven years. It is one dream. Behold, the seven years that are coming there will be a great plenty throughout the land, and after that the seven years of famine will follow them, a very grievous famine and all the plenty will be forgotten from the land, and the famine will consume the inhabitants of the land. The king dreamed one dream, and the dream was therefore repeated unto Pharaoh, because the thing is established by Elohim, and Elohim will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore, I will give you counsel and deliver your soul and the souls of the inhabitants of the land from the evil of the famine that you seek throughout your kingdom for a man very discreet and wise who knows all the affairs of government 
and appoint him to superintend over the land of Mitzrayim. And let the man whom you place over Mitzrayim appoint officers under him, that they gather in all the food of the good years that are coming, and let them lay up grain and deposit it in your appointed stores, and let them keep that food for the seven years of famine, that it may be found for you and your people and your whole land, and that you and your land be not cut off by the famine. Let all the inhabitants of the land be also ordered that they gather in every man the produce of his field, of all sorts of food, during the seven good years, and that they place it in their stores, that it may be found for them in the days of the famine, and that they may live upon it. This is the proper interpretation of your dream, and this is the counsel given to save your soul and the souls of all your subjects. And the king answered and said unto Yosef, Who says and who knows that your words are correct? And he said unto the king, This shall be a sign for you, respecting all my words, that they are true, and that my advice is good for you. Behold, your woman sits this day upon the stool of delivery, and she will bear you a son, and you will, re you will rejoice with him, when your child shall have gone forth from his mother's womb. Your firstborn son, that has been born these two years back, shall die, and you will be comforted in the child that will be born unto you this day. And Yosef finished speaking these words to the king, and he bowed down to the king, and he went out. And when Yosef had gone out from the king's presence, those signs which Yosef had spoken unto the king came to pass on that day. And the queen bore a son on that day, and the king heard the good news about his son, and he rejoiced. And when the reporter had gone forth from the king's presence, the king's servants found the firstborn son of the king fallen dead upon the ground. And there was great lamentation and noise in the king's house, and the king heard it, and he said, what is the noise and lamentation that I have heard in the house? And they told the king that his firstborn son had died. Then the king knew that all Yosef's words that he had spoken were correct. And the king was consoled for his son by the child that was born to him on that day, as Yosef had spoken.